week, Lab TV travels to an Air Force research lab in Dayton, Ohio, where scientists are developing an exciting new fuel from a very ordinary metal, aluminum. Aluminum is an element, it is a very common material. You find it right here. It's used in many structural things. Aluminum is a lightweight metal that's used to make airplanes, cars, bicycles, buildings, electronics, and lots of things you have around the house. So aluminum is very common. Yeah, we use it so many different places. Oh, it's also your soda case. In nature, aluminum is combined with other elements. It's much too reactive to occur as a free metal. There's a very well-known reaction, the aluminum water reaction. If you take aluminum, put it in water, the aluminum will oxidize, it'll take the oxygen from the water and it will liberate that hydrogen. The hydrogen will then come off as hydrogen gas and you'll end up with an aluminum oxide byproduct. The aluminum objects that we use, like soda cans, have a protective oxide coating that keeps this reaction from happening. And that's a good thing, because it's a powerful reaction. The uh, reaction is extremely exothermic. Okay, what that means, well, you have two things. You have exothermic reactions and endothermic. Endothermic takes heat to make the reaction go. Exothermic gives off heat when the reaction goes. This gives off lots of heat. If you want the number, it's 31 kilojoules per gram for aluminum to go to aluminum oxide. Lots and lots of heat. Dr. Bunker and his team are working to harness the hydrogen released in this reaction. The key is creating aluminum nanoparticles that are stable in air. Nanoparticle is something that is very, very, very small. Molecules, atoms, are on the angstrom level, so these are only a little bit bigger, just one order of magnitude larger. So these are about 30, 30 nanometers or 300 angstroms, so we're only a little bit bigger than when you play with atoms. These nanoparticles have a protective coating on them that when we put it in water, it just gets out of the way. They start reacting with the water, strips off the oxygen, and hydrogen comes off. Lots and lots of hydrogen. The scientist can convert that hydrogen gas to electricity and power all sorts of devices. First, they place the nanoparticles in a small, high-pressure tank, inject some water, and lock on a cap. All right, so we've generated our hydrogen. We're sitting at 350 PSI, and what we're doing is taking the hydrogen to a pressure regulator that'll bring it down to about five PSI. That's the pressure that the fuel cell requires. And make sure we have the right amount. Fuel cell fired up. I'm gonna give it a little purge to get the hydrogen through it. And we're now up around 17, 18 volts from that fuel cell. Um, that's what the laptop requires to boot, and then we will uh, fire up the laptop. All done with nanohydrogen. And this process could help make hydrogen a much safer fuel. It's not stored as a gas, it's stored as water. The water is two hydrogens and one oxygen. Great place to store it, it's high density. It has over 1,000 liters of hydrogen available per liter of water. So by liberating that hydrogen, they can create a lot of energy. It could be very useful in an emergency situation. A little bit of this, a little bit of water. It can be dirty water, it can be water from a creek, it can be water from snow melted in your hand. And then you use that into something like a fuel cell, a very small portable fuel cell to generate power for an emergency transponder or a cell phone or something like that. You could also burn this fuel. You could use it in a rocket engine. You could use it in an airplane. It, it, it is discovery, it is playing. It's fun, it's, it's, you, you get to go in and be like an artist, be like a painter. You have your palette of paints, chemicals, and you know what you can do and where you can go is only limited by your own imagination. To find out more about aluminum nanoparticles and hydrogen fuel, check out labtvonline.org.